hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or of course welcome if you're new my name is bella and i just love to make all these cleaning and decorating and organizing videos but today i think i'm going to do something a little bit different as many of you know i have chronic sciatica and that can affect mobility all the time and i know that i'm not alone in it i know that so many people all around the world struggle with chronic pain issues and i always make an effort to keep it super real on this channel i usually tell you when i'm experiencing pain so that you know that not everything is all sunshine and rainbows over here because that's just not how life is but just to make sure that we're all on the same page i'm gonna kind of explain sciatica to the best of my ability to you as if you don't know what it is i know a lot of people have it and they might already know what it is but for those of you who don't it's a nerve condition where from what i understand it is sometimes a result of a slipped disc at some point and it pinches on your nerve and it can cause a lot of pain for me it causes really sharp pain but then in my calf it's really dull pain and it's super confusing to explain to somebody that hasn't felt it it's a feeling unlike anything else honestly it feels almost like it starts behind my right hip and then it's mainly in my knee it usually stays in my hip and my knee and from what i understand it can occur on either side of your body but it usually only occurs on one side for me it's always my right side it's always been my right side and that's just what i'm used to i've never felt it on my left side so I don't know if it's the same i assume it's the same amount of pain and usually it's caught right away but mine wasn't and i'll kind of get into that right now it's kind of a unique circumstance i have had this ever since i was a young child honestly i don't remember a time where i didn't have it but growing up as a lot of you know i was adopted and no one else in my adoptive family has this so when i came to my mom or my dad and i was like oh my back really hurts or my knee really hurts it was always with the best of intentions chalked up to growing pains or maybe i was playing too hard at recess or something super innocent like that by no fault of my parents by the way because they seriously just had no clue like neither of my parents have sciatica i'm the only one in my immediate family as i said so obviously it's nobody's fault but it is what happened so as a result of that of everybody telling me it was normal like it was just growing pains or whatever i thought that everybody felt this i thought that it was completely normal for your back and your knee and your calf to just always hurt and for it to never stop hurting so i just never pushed the matter i always when i was feeling it which was always i was like oh it's normal i guess it just happens like whatever kind of type of thing and i know that i shouldn't now but as a little kid you don't really know to keep pushing and maybe tell a doctor or whatever because you just don't know it's not something you think about and i'm gonna be really honest i thought that i was just a wuss like everybody else can handle this and i'm the only one that is complaining about it like i'm the only one that doesn't want to go running at recess or playing with my friends and everybody else can and i just must be super weak it wasn't even until middle school that i realized that maybe i just wasn't super weak and something was really wrong i was actually standing in class before the bell rang and i was rubbing my back because it hurt and one of my teachers asked me what was wrong and i said oh my back always just hurts like just matter of fact oh my back always just hurts and they actually expressed concern about that they're like well you know you're in middle school your back shouldn't always hurt you know have you told your parents oh yeah i've told my parents it's just my back always hurts <laughs> it was just like that like i was like oh it just happens you know and even though i had that one experience it still wasn't completely enough to erase the whole like oh everybody just feels this type of mentality that i had had for as long as i can remember so i have vivid memories of being in so much pain and still having to run miles in pe and then my teachers wondering why i wasn't keeping up with everybody else when it was honestly just i had to stop and walk sometimes because i couldn't keep running with my back or my knee i just couldn't do it i was in so much pain and i was really embarrassed because i'm like well everybody else can do this even though i assumed they had the same amount of pain 
and how come I'm the only one that can't? There must be something wrong with me because like I must just be dramatic or like acting stupid or overreacting or anything like that and I just couldn't give myself the respect or grace to maybe consider you know there might really be something wrong and this might just be a me thing and maybe everybody doesn't experience this. And then after long enough of just pushing it aside, I pushed through it every time I was in pain at any job I ever had before I became a stay-at-home mom. I just pushed through it no matter how much pain I was in. It honestly wasn't even until I got pregnant with Kennedy that I even had a name for it. I didn't even know that it was called sciatica. I don't think that I had ever even really heard the name or know or knew what it was about maybe i had heard of it but i didn't know the exact condition but then one of my um neonatal doctors i totally forgot the word for OBGYN guys sorry um pushed on the nerve she was like oh is, is this what hurts and i was like yeah that that's literally what hurts that's what it's always hurt and then she explained what it was and guys i can't even tell you how validating it felt to finally be like oh no this is an actual thing and you felt this and it wasn't you being dramatic and it wasn't you being overly sensitive it was literally a medical condition that nobody knew about until you were 22 years old and because i found out so late in my life relatively i didn't have the proper tools to be able to manage it not that there are many tools to manage it by the way and we can get into that a little bit later but i finally at the very least had a name for it and that was just so empowering and moving on to how this affects me in motherhood i have trouble if i need to lift kennedy or if i need to bend down to get something off the ground now that Kennedy can stand up, it actually makes things a lot easier. But cleaning sometimes is really hard. I've shared how when I'm doing the dishes, when I have to lean on my right side to put dishes away, it causes sometimes a lot of pain. And I can usually handle it if it's not flaring up, which it can flare up for any reason, no matter what. But when it's not actively flaring up, it's better. I can still feel it, but... I can handle it, I can manage it, I can clean perfectly fine, but it's those times where I am clocked out in bed for a week that things really build up and get really overwhelming around here. And in addition to that, and I'm obviously not blaming Kennedy for any of this, but sometimes when we're moms, we don't have a lot of time, so there's no time to maybe stretch and try to prevent it because that's the only real treatment there is, is like preventative stretching and self-care in general but if i need to pick up something and matt's not home sometimes i still have to pick up that thing and there is always a risk of hurting my back which i do multiple times a year at least once or twice a year i pull my back out so bad and then i'm done i can't do anything until it's feeling better i actually have an example it was in our last house but nonetheless this was one of the bad ones that i can remember recently matt wasn't home and i had to move a bulk bag of lauren's cat food because we order in bulk and i had to go to lift up the amazon box and it just instant pain i knew that i messed it up i couldn't stand up straight i just had to sit down i think i actually called matt and had him come home that day it was just all bad it was bad news it hurt so bad. I think that that one actually caused a month-long flare-up, and that was the worst flare-up I think I've ever had. Honestly, I just hate thinking about that. But that's kind of what I mean as an adult. Sometimes you still gotta do what you gotta do. I can't leave it out on the porch. Math's not home. It had to be done. It was just really unfortunate that it was one of the times where it really ended up hurting me. I haven't done anything to actively pull my back this year. I call it an event when that happens because sometimes it just flares up, but sometimes an event causes it. But hey, the year's still young, so give me a couple more months. <laughs> and that brings me to what I wanted to actually talk about next, which was knowing when we need to push through as an adult and when we need to take it easy and rest and of course that's a person by person case only you know your body only you know what is too much for you and i'm totally the type of person that doesn't want to ask for help 
I don't want to feel like I'm pawning Kennedy off on anybody or inconveniencing or bothering anybody to watch Kennedy or help me out around the house. I always feel really bad. My mom is always good about offering it because she knows that I don't like to ask for help when it comes to Kennedy all the time. And I think a really good thing to think about, which I need to listen to myself on this because sometimes I go right against this, but always test the weight. If you're not sure about something, make sure that you pick it up and kind of test it because sciatica is something that can just happen to you. Um, if you slip a disc, it can become chronic. So I don't want that for you. I don't want anyone to experience this. So make sure that you know you're checking, kind of like move the box around, see if it might be too heavy for you. And if you just have like a gut feeling that something might be too heavy, just don't pick it up. Maybe just wait if you can. Sometimes I know that you can't because you have to pick things up. But if it can wait, it probably should if you're worried about it hurting your back. It's so easy for you to mess up your back and then sometimes it's never the same. And it's really nothing to mess around with. Um, it just kind of unfortunately happened to me. Of course, I'm never going to know exactly how it happened because I don't remember a time where this wasn't a thing, but this is kind of a PSA, just make sure that you're protecting yourself because I care about each and every one of you and I don't want you to go through lifelong back pain because it's honestly not fun at all. And again, just a total PSA, I don't want you to feel bad for me because this is just something that has always been a thing for me and I don't think that anybody should feel bad because I've come to terms with it and I'm okay. I know how I can cope with it as best as I can and then when I can't and I need to just rest, I will of course let you guys know and I'm gonna try to get better about asking for help when that happens and not just causing more damage because I've done that too. <laughs> and I'm gonna be super upfront and if I can't film a video because I just can't, then I apologize in advance, but sometimes I need to do that so that I don't injure myself further and I really don't want that because this is honestly sucky enough. <laughs> and this part I saved towards the end because I know that some people get really sad about mental health and stuff like that, but in terms of mental health, this condition has affected me. I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, always feeling less than or lazy or just weak or like there was something like wrong with my motivation or something and not just wrong physically and I think that for a long time my self-confidence took a hit because I wasn't able to do the same sports that my friends did or participate in the same things and I didn't want anybody to know that I was feeling that way so I kind of just didn't say anything but at the end of the day, like you can't just brush past those feelings. So I think that that did cause some anxiety throughout my life because before I gave it up and just accepted it as part of my reality that everybody feels the same pain, I was telling my teachers all the time that I wanted to go to the nurse because my back hurt so bad when I was like seven. And there was no way that they did not think that I was faking that. And I could totally get that vibe from my teachers too. And everyone just thinking that I was being dramatic or whatever, when honestly, if you think about it, sciatica for a seven-year-old that's pretty brutal like I wouldn't wish that on anybody as an adult I wouldn't wish that on anybody but as a child even less so and I had no idea what it was that's just that's so messed up because I just wish that one of my teachers had maybe taken me a little bit seriously throughout my life that would have helped my self-confidence a lot and honestly I'm really glad for that one teacher that recognized it as maybe an issue when I was just trying to brush past it and I'm always going to remember that teacher for that. That was really special and it was a moment where somebody really cared and believed about my back pain and that's something that I'm going to say too. If you're a teacher out there, please just believe your kids because sometimes something like this could be going on you just have no idea. And again, that sentiment is more directed at people who might have a better idea of this being around people like teachers and stuff because again, I don't blame my parents at all. They had no idea. I don't expect them to have any idea about sciatica when they have never experienced it or 
knew anybody that had because my mom has even said recently that she feels bad because she just didn't know the seriousness of it. And connection is so important, so I would encourage you if you feel so inclined and you feel like it, if you would head down to the comments and you can vent all you want because I know that I've been going on about me for a little while, but I want to be here to support and encourage you as well. And I know that our community will just rally behind you and offer you words of encouragement or words of sympathy. And that goes for anything that you're experiencing, whether it's medical or falling under the same kind of bracket of mental health, just whatever you're feeling, if you want to vent about it, I would encourage you to do that. And if nobody has told you lately, I see you. I totally know that you're doing your best out there. It's been a hard couple years for everybody as well. Even if you didn't have anything prior to it, it's been hard for everybody. And that's why I wanna be here for you. So I will be monitoring those comments very closely and chatting with you down there. But until then, see you later. I love you beauties.